You know what Sonic fans complain about a lot? Sonic review scores. It is a well-known fact that Sonic is not the most critically acclaimed video game franchise. It's actually quite the opposite. Sonic gets a lot of bad review scores. So much that people almost expect Sonic games to be bad right out of the gate. Despite this, however, Sonic fans tend to believe that some of the bad review scores are unfair. That Sonic games are better than what critics say they are. And look, I think it's completely understandable. When you see games like Sonic Unleashed getting similar review scores to Sonic Forces, you kind of raise an eyebrow. But I mean, at the end of the day, it is just opinions. It it's just wild opinions, you know what I mean? Game critics can have whatever opinion they want on a Sonic game, and I don't think they're a terrible person for believing Sonic Unleashed is a bad video game. I want to make that clear with this video. Do not harass any game critics. They are just expressing their opinions on the video games that they play. They are not the villains. However, that does not mean I can't make fun of these reviews because while critics are entitled to their opinion, I'm also entitled to disagree and make fun of it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to be reviewing what Sonic fans perceive as the most unfair review scores that Sonic games have ever received. And I'm going to be giving my thoughts on if I personally think they are valid or not. Now, again, this is purely a subjective video, so nothing I say is definitive or objective. This is just for fun. I'm giving my subjective opinions on what these critics deem to be the good and bad Sonic games. So without further ado, make sure to go supersonic on that subscribe button and hit the bell. Anyways, let's get right into it. Before we may continue, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, Pocket Champs. It is a fantastic time killer of a mobile game that is currently available for iOS and Android devices. In this game, you train and upgrade your own Pocket Champs to unlock their fullest potential so that you may win upcoming races. But to win those races, you might need to strategize and find the best way to actually win the race, which you can do through world analysis and selecting tons of wonderful gadgets. And just just like any trainer, you have to trust your champ, lay back, and watch them race. Who knows, maybe you'll even be the best. The game has online leaderboards, so you can climb straight to the top. Which sounds awesome, I mean, like, why would you not want to be the best? Especially when the game has such amazing features such as a wide variety of cute, accessible, and fully customizable champs that you're able to play with. Even better, there's over 40 gadgets for players to complete races with in unique ways. So really, there's no reason why you shouldn't go and download this game to play it. There's even monthly updates with exclusive content for players, so it's a live service game as well. And with that said, I implore you to download Pocket Champs from the link in the description since it's a great game, and it also goes a long way in supporting this channel as well. I've also partnered with Pocket Champs to offer you guys a starter pack with 500 gems and a White Wolf skin. All you have to do is scan the QR code right here or check the link in the description. By the way, this starter pack is $15 worth of content and it's only available for until the 31st of October, so hurry up and get it. Anyways, thank you to Pocket Champs for sponsoring today's video. Okay, let's start off with an easy one. The review score on Sonic 06. This game got an average critic score of 46%, thus making it one of the worst received Sonic games of all time. Now look, I, I don't like clowning on Sonic 06 because this game has been beaten to death, but you gotta admit, even if you like the ideas and the ambition it had, the game should have never been released like this. This is actually embarrassing. Th this game definitely deserved this score. I will admit that I do have a bit of a guilty pleasure with the game. It's not the best game ever made, but I, I do enjoy it sometimes, you know? I I'm, I'm somewhat of a Sonic 06 enjoyer. I love the music, the level design, I like the ambition, the hub worlds. There's a lot to like about this game. The only problem is that you have to overlook how poorly put together the game is to enjoy those aspects. Personally, I think the game is a slight bit better than a 46%, but at the same time, due to the disrespect that Sega showed to this game, they, they definitely deserved a low score. And as we'll talk about later on in the video, Sega did eventually realize that they messed up and they did attempt at making a better game. Overall though, th the critics were correct on this one. This is not that good of a game. 
Another really controversial score that a Sonic game got was Sonic Frontiers. Sonic Frontiers landed at a 71% on Metacritic. This is kind of a hard one to judge because I think the score is fair to the game, but I also understand why Sonic fans are so upset. At the end of the day, the average review score came out to a 7 out of 10, which is not a bad review score whatsoever. So if you look at it that way, it's kind of stupid to get mad at critics for giving a game a perfectly fine score. However, since the game isn't at a 75% on Metacritic, it is now in the yellow, which makes a lot of Sonic fans frustrated because this 7 out of 10 game is still being labeled as mediocre to the general public. Which may sound absolutely ridiculous, but sometimes the general public is full of Neanderthals that start foaming at the mouth if they see the color yellow next to a review score. Here's my take on this. Not only do I think Rider dying for a review score is kinda stupid, but this is extra stupid. The game got a 7 out of 10. Th this is a well-received Sonic game, I, I don't see any issue here. Sure, it's stupid when people can point at a yellow review score and that's their reasoning as to why Sonic Frontiers is bad, but at the end of the day, I don't care about arguing with Twitter kids about review scores, so to me, it's just a 7 out of 10, which, in my opinion, is a very valid score for Sonic Frontiers. Okay, I was bound to talk about this at some point in this video, so we might as well talk about it now. The Sonic Adventure Games. Now, both of these games receive very good review scores. Sonic Adventure 1 has some good reviews, although they're so old that they can't be compiled on Metacritic. And Sonic Adventure 2 actually got an 89% on Metacritic, making it the third best reviewed Sonic game of all time. Right behind Sonic Mania Plus for the Nintendo Switch and Sonic CD for iOS devices. However, upon being ported to modern systems, the review score has significantly gone down. The original Sonic Adventure 2 GameCube went from an 89% to a 73% which is not that bad in my opinion. Again, same situation as Sonic Frontiers, it's a 7 out of 10, so it's not that big of a deal. But when it comes to the first Sonic Adventure, it got a whopping 57%. Alright, look, you guys know me, I'm a white knight for these Sonic Adventure games, and, and I understand that the DX port was, was kind of bad, for lack of a better term. But come on, bro, a 57%? That, that's you gotta be kidding me. You see, as a porting job, 57% is fair. In fact, I feel like it should be lower than that. But as a whole package, I think 57% is way too low. Don't get me wrong, I am not a director's cut defender, but the game is still Sonic Adventure at the end of the day. It at least deserves to be in the 60s. But I mean, it is what it is, it's not the most offensive score in the world. I just feel it's a bit undeserved. Okay, I wanted to include this one because I believe that I am goaded on this one. Sonic Lost World got a 63% on Metacritic. I think it deserves at least a 70. Now don't laugh, don't do it, it is not funny, okay? Sonic Lost World is overhated and I'm tired of pretending it's not because it's a good game. I genuinely do understand a lot of the criticism that this game gets. The art style is boring and clearly wow. rips off Mario. It's not as good as the boosting gameplay, and the story just plain out sucks. But the gameplay itself is very enjoyable. It's polished, not many glitches. The game is perfectly fine. Sonic Lost World is one of those games that I played that everyone hated, and I ended up coming out wondering why everyone hated it. This is a fun game. Genuinely, alright? This is, this is not a joke, this is not a bit. I, I like this game. I mean, it's not the greatest thing ever made, but come on, it's at least a 7. The thing that confuses me is that I don't see anything that is downright offensive about Sonic Lost World's gameplay. Like, with games such as Sonic Forces, you can point out how bad the automation is. For the storybook games, you can talk about the motion controls. And even for good games like Sonic Unleashed, you can point out the Werehog. But for Sonic Lost World, what, what, what do you point out? The, the visuals? It's on a planet like Mario Galaxy? I just don't get it. What is so bad about the gameplay? It's a perfectly fine Sonic game with a terrible story and bad visuals. So, in my opinion, I think it deserves a 7 on Metacritic. Although, I know most people are going to disagree with this. And, uh, all I have to say to that is good luck. Tell me how wrong I am in the comments. Okay, this is the moment you have all been waiting for. Sonic Unleashed. What do I think about this review score? Do I think it's fair? Or maybe it's unfair? I don't know, you tell me. Sonic Unleashed is my favorite game, like, ever. 
So yeah, I think a 6 out of 10 is unfair. I believe the game deserves at least a 7, but I would go as far as a high 7 to a low 8. I think that's a fair score. I'm not going to be biased and say it deserves a 100 or 97, because I do understand why people do not enjoy this game. The Werehog is not for everyone, I get it. But games like Fallout 4 have made it to the 80s, why can't Sonic Unleashed make it to the 80s? I'm not gonna say much else, I just believe that in terms of ambition, story, gameplay, that Sonic Unleashed is the most impressive Sonic game. I love this game, you guys know this, so I'm not gonna talk about it any further, let's move on. Alright, so it turns out that Sonic Unleashed is not the most offensive score for a Sonic game. No, it, it is much worse. Can we get a drum roll, please? It's Sonic 4 Episode 1. Sonic 4 got an 81% on Metacritic. 81%! Not only is Sonic 4 one of the biggest piles of trash I have ever experienced, but, but it's also an insult to the Sonic brand. They actually had the titanium M metallic balls to call this game Sonic 4, the official sequel to Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yet it has zero momentum, one playable character, physics that feel like dog water, unoriginal levels, short game with a level design that can put you to sleep. Yet th this game got an 81%. Of course, everyone is entitled to their opinion, but who plays Sonic 4 and is like, Dang, what a great game, bro. Sonic is back, mate. N nobody is saying that. I think what the most insulting part about all of this is that this game, that is a terrible sequel to one of the greatest platformers of all time, got into the 80s on Metacritic. Which means that this game scored higher than the Sonic Adventure games, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Generations, Sonic Colors, Sonic Frontiers, and like, 20 other infinitely better Sonic games than Sonic 4. This review is actually clinically insane. Imagine trying to get into the series and you see games like Sonic Generation, Sonic Colors, and you're like, okay, th those games reviewed well, but hold on, Sonic 4 is at 81%. I should check this out first. Oh wait, it sucks. Who would have guessed the Sonic game that isn't fun? Wow. Y you see, this is what causes villains. I if somebody was to play Sonic 4 as their first Sonic game ever, I would totally believe that they would be the real life Joker. And you know what? He's completely justified in his decisions. I don't even know where I'm going with this. S Sonic 4 is bad, all right? This is not a good game. It doesn't deserve an 80. But in reality, I, I guess I just don't really care that much. Review scores are very insignificant and don't really change much about these games that we play, so in reality, I, I don't care that the critics don't like a game like Sonic Unleashed because I personally love that game and no critic can take that away from me. And that's all that really matters. I know that's a bizarre idea, but you don't have to agree with the critics. You could just you know, form your own opinions. You also don't have to hate the critics. They are just doing a job, and just because they hate your favorite Sonic game, that, that doesn't mean you have to dogpile them on Twitter. Everyone is allowed to coexist in the Sonic community. It doesn't have to be a battle. Anyways, that's all I have to say on the topic, so if you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe with the bell. Also, a final reminder to check out Pocket Champs in the link in the description. I love you guys. I'll see you very soon. Peace out. My chill members are Snack Pigeon, Neol, Scully, AHS, Francis T218, Sonic Man 715, 3 Monic, ArchXYZ, Pi Studios, Bananas, Junion Rings, Chip Chap Chop, The Squeaker Nerd, Super Shacks Boom, and Super Saiyan Sonic. Thank you all for supporting the channel. Make sure to click one of the end card screen videos here. Love you guys. Peace out.